announced completion for controversial power dam on the River Nile. Now, Ethiopia has announced completion of a controversial power dam on the River Nile that drew the ire of Egypt and Sudan. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Ethiopia completes third filling of Blue Nile Mega Dam Reservoir. After over 10 years of engineering feats, political debate, and intense diplomacy, Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam is now complete. Once a bold national ambition, it has evolved into a powerful regional force with global consequences. The dam's impact extends beyond borders, reshaping energy dynamics, sparking new alliances, and redefining the balance of power along the Nile. This story was first reported by AA Africa News. Let's explore what completion really means and why the world is watching. Engineering Triumph and Historic Vision Ethiopia's Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, positioned on the Blue Nile, recently reached its final construction milestone, marking a historic engineering triumph. Spanning 1.8 kilometers in length and towering 155 meters, this colossal structure will hold an astonishing 74 billion cubic meters of water, enough to provide hydroelectric power for up to 65 million people. In recent months, crews completed the final concrete placement, sealing the spillway gates, and enabling precise calibration of turbines ahead of a planned September inauguration. As the world's largest hydroelectric dam in Africa, the GERD reflects Ethiopia's ambition to break free from recurring power shortages that have stifled economic growth. The country's installed power generation capacity now stands at roughly 6,000 megawatts, with GERD's projected output of up to 5,150 megawatts. That total could nearly double over 11,000 megawatts, ushering in a new era of energy stability. According to Ethiopian Electric Power Corporation's latest update, more than 90% of turbine testing has been completed successfully, with turbines number one through number eight already synchronized with the national grid. Experts emphasize that this is not just an infrastructure milestone. It's the physical embodiment of Ethiopia's development vision, focused on industrialization, regional integration, and energy export. Neighboring nations like Sudan and Djibouti are already in talks to secure long-term hydropower agreements. All eyes are now trained on the official inauguration ceremony scheduled for September, where Ethiopia's leadership will welcome domestic and international dignitaries to witness the flow of Nile waters through turbines that promise to change lives, industries, and geopolitics across East Africa. Geopolitical Ripples and Nile Basin Diplomacy the operational launch of GERD is reshaping Nile Basin geopolitics and international diplomacy. Egypt, historically reliant on 55 billion cubic meters of Nile water annually, sees the dam as a potential threat to its water security, especially during consecutive drought years. Despite Ethiopian assurances that GERD's regulated filling will prevent harm, Egyptian authorities remain wary. They cite concerns over water flow adjustments that might affect agricultural output, which contributes close to 12% of Egypt's GDP. Cairo argues that the dam's impoundment must align with the 1959 Nile Waters Agreement and demands legally binding guarantees. In contrast, Ethiopia champions the principle of equitable and reasonable utilization under international water law. It insists that the dam will reduce evaporation losses and enhance flood control, potentially benefiting downstream nations. Sudan, meanwhile, has adopted a more cautious but cooperative stance. Sudanese officials assert that GERD's reservoir can mitigate seasonal flooding and boost their irrigation schemes, but they also emphasize the need for transparent data sharing and coordinated release schedules. Recent trilateral discussions under African Union mediation have produced a draft declaration outlining water release protocols, joint technical committees, and monitoring mechanisms. Yet tensions persist as mistrust lingers and legal disputes loom. The looming inauguration may offer an opportunity for a fresh diplomatic thrust. Regional analysts suggest that if Ethiopia finalizes operational rules that safeguard downstream communities and promotes shared benefits, such as cheaper electricity exports, turning the signing into a moment of continental unity, the dam could then emerge not as a symbol of conflict, but of transboundary cooperation that models sustainable water resource management for the global south. Environmental impacts and management strategies with GERD's reservoir set to fill starting this rainy season, significant environmental considerations come into focus. 
Analyses predict a new 1,680 square kilometer reservoir, which shifts local ecosystems, wetlands, wildlife habitats, and migratory bird patterns will all experience disruption. Aquatic species in the Blue Niles Rapids may suffer from altered flow regimes, but wildlife officials are developing conservation zones and fish passages to preserve biodiversity. Ethiopia's Ministry of Water and Energy highlights a comprehensive environmental and social management plan integrating controlled drawdowns, sediment management, and reforestation drives to offset ecological losses. Sediment accumulation behind the dam is a key issue. It reduces storage capacity and harms downstream agricultural soils that rely on nutrient-rich silt. To combat this, engineers have equipped GERD with strategically designed sediment sluices. Scheduled flushes will keep sediment moving downstream during rainy seasons. Officials also say the dam will improve water quality downstream by stabilizing flow and reducing devastating sediment floods. At the reservoir's periphery, Ethiopia plans to implement farm-to-market roads and agronomic extension services, boosting local food security in resettlement zones. These infrastructures aim to elevate previously marginalized communities, aligning with the government's target to reduce poverty by 25% over the next decade. Critics, however, caution that climate variability, including longer dry seasons tied to climate change, could complicate reservoir management raising evaporative losses and stressing ecosystems. Ethiopia counters that GERD's integrated adaptive management framework, supported by real-time monitoring and scientific partnerships, aims to respond dynamically to shifting hydrology. Economic boom and regional integration. Once fully operational, GERD is projected to inject more than $1 billion annually into Ethiopia's economy, making it a cornerstone of national development. The dam's electricity will power expansion across metals, textiles, agro-processing, and digital industries, which are central to Ethiopia's Vision 2030 strategy. With reliable power, the country plans to develop special economic zones, SEZs, including industrial parks near Addis Ababa and the port in Djibouti. These facilities are expected to house manufacturers seeking lower-cost, sustainable energy supplies for mid- and heavy-duty production. A 2024 analysis by the African Development Bank estimates that industrial output could grow by up to 20% within five years, driven by power availability. Excess electricity is intended for exports to Sudan, Kenya, and South Sudan via new interconnectors. Revenues from these exports would help Ethiopia repay the dam's estimated $5 billion construction cost, financed by government bonds, diaspora contributions, and international loans. Plans are underway to develop a regional power pool connecting Eastern Africa's grids, a move that could stabilize markets, reduce blackout risks, and integrate carbon-free energy into national planning. Local communities are already seeing early benefits. Access to electricity has enabled small businesses, night schools, and health clinics to operate longer hours. Construction camps built schools, hospitals, and paved roads in adjacent zones, boosting local living standards and stimulating micro-enterprise clusters. Employment data show over 30,000 direct jobs from dam construction, with an additional 50,000 created through ancillary trades. Social transformation and resettlement efforts. The dam's creation required relocating around 20,000 people from villages submerged by the reservoir. Ethiopia's Resettlement and Rehabilitation Directorate reports that new settlements offer upgraded housing, improved water and sanitation infrastructure, and access to schools and clinics. Residents now receive monthly stipends during transition, vocational training in carpentry, agriculture, and clean energy systems, ensuring long-term self-reliance. For example, women's cooperatives in official resettlement sites have begun producing solar lanterns and organic produce, supplying markets in Addis Ababa. Community health workers also report a 40% reduction in waterborne disease incidents thanks to chlorinated water networks introduced alongside settlements. Scholars argue that improved livelihoods and health outcomes here provide a replicable model for globally displaced communities. That said, monitoring has found some gaps. Certain resettles cite delays in promised irrigation canals, while elders report challenges adjusting to modern housing. In response, local authorities have set up plaintiff committees and grievance hotlines to address issues swiftly. 
A third-party audit by an international consultancy in March 2025 credited Ethiopia's resettlement framework for being more participatory than World Bank benchmarks, though it recommended deeper financial literacy training for families managing new asset portfolios. Furthermore, the power generated by GERD will help rural electrification projects. Over 1 million households are slated for grid extension or off-grid solar integration within two years, significantly reducing energy poverty. As electricity spreads, remote clinics will power refrigerators for vaccines, schools will run computers, and rural entrepreneurs can join national supply chains. Countdown to launch. What's next in September? With the dam deemed fully operational, Ethiopia is now in final preparations for its grand inauguration this September, a ceremony expected to attract high-level leaders from Africa, the UN, and international lenders. Coordination teams confirmed invitations to heads of state from Nile Basin countries to reinforce cooperative narratives. The event will feature the symbolic first full generation of electricity, an academic forum on hydropower innovation, and tours of the powerhouse and spillway gates. To build global visibility, Ethiopia's tourism ministry is planning live broadcasting and educational content showcasing engineering feats, ancient Nubian relics recently excavated near the site, and planned cultural festivals around the reservoir shoreline. Economists are watching closely. Market rates for Ethiopian sovereign bonds already reflect improved credit assessments, expected to strengthen further after inauguration. The government has set aside $200 million to stabilize domestic electricity tariffs during the transition, ensuring affordability as supply scales up. Meanwhile, technical teams continue stress testing, running extended low-load tests to fine-tune control systems ahead of full load. Bilateral task forces with Egypt and Sudan are meeting weekly to share hydrological data, with agreements that quarterly data dashboards will be made public starting September 1. Climate experts are engaged in scenario modeling, preparing for extreme rainy or drought events in the next decade, an effort to validate GERD's resilience under climate stress. As the countdown narrows to just a few weeks, a spirit of possibility is palpable. Ethiopia is positioning the dam not only as its national triumph, but as a beacon of African self-determination and modernity. If all goes as planned, September's inauguration will mark the moment when the mighty Blue Nile shifts from historic challenge to 21st century opportunity, powering communities, economies, and regional solidarity alike. As Ethiopia gears up for the September inauguration of the GERD, one thing is clear. This isn't just a dam. It's a statement. With the potential to generate over 6,000 megawatts of electricity, Ethiopia is positioning itself as an energy powerhouse in East Africa. But challenges remain. Diplomatic pressure, environmental concerns, and regional skepticism. Still, for millions of Ethiopians, this is a moment of triumph. Special thanks to AA Africa News for reporting this historic milestone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the conversation in the comments. Is GERD a symbol of progress or of deepening divides?